Hey guys, so today we are going to be working on Everyday Math Lesson 6.11, and this is about number stories with two-step, or uh, number models with two-step number stories. So I will tell you that these um, number stories are more difficult than the ones that we have been doing, because we have to stop and we have to think about um, what the story is saying. We have to think about what are the two steps. We're going to need to be thinking about um, how we're going to write the number models or the number sentence for these. And we might be using parentheses and the order, order of operations to help us to solve these problems. So there's a lot of things that go into solving these problems, but we're going to go through them step by step use our race strategy or cube strategy and um, use the order of operations to get us through it. After the lesson, you are gonna do math boxes, then the home link, and then um, I want you to do some practice with your facts on extra math. So our objective for today is, I can solve two-step number stories and represent them with equations. All right, so thinking about this in your head, 25 minus something equals 15. So one thing that I like to remember with this is um, we need to make both sides of the equation the same. So I have to make this side equal to this side. <clears throat> and so I have to think about, well, how do I get from 25 to 15? Well, I would need to subtract. So I already have my subtraction um, sign in there. And I know that <clears throat> my ones are the same. I have a five and a five. So I know I'm gonna have, um, my number's gonna need to be a zero. And then the other pieces I can see in my tens, I have a two and then a one. If I were to subtract two minus one, it would be give me 10. So <clears throat> when I look at it, 25 minus 10 does in fact equal 15. All right, let's look at this one a little bit more tricky. <clears throat> 10 plus 20 plus something equals 40. So again, we want this side of the equation to equal the right side of the equation. <clears throat> so first I know 10 plus 20 is 30. And then I have to ask myself, well, what am I going to add to get 40? And I know that I can jump by tens. So I'm going to go 30 and then another 10 is going to be 40. So I'm looking for plus 10. So we're going to add 10 into the, our equation. All right, the last one has parentheses, and I need to know the quantity five plus five minus something equals five. So first thing I'm gonna do is solve my parentheses because I always do that first. Five plus five is 10. <clears throat> so I have 10 minus something equals five. And I know that 10 minus 5 is going to leave me with 5. So <clears throat> remember, we have to make the left side of the equation equal the same as what's on the right. All right, so turn in your book to page 214. <clears throat> and we're going to look at um, this representation of what Judy has on her board or on her problem. So the problem says, Judy is solving the number story below. Mrs. Barnes buys four packs of colored markers. There are five markers in each pack. She gives some markers away and ends up with eight markers for herself. How many markers did she give away? To help Judy, to help, Judy drew the diagram below. She wrote the letter M to represent the markers given away in the story. So in this problem, she is using a start, change, 
diagram, start change in diagram. So we're looking at what did she start with? We're looking at what changed and then what does she have in the end? So when I look at this, I still want to be using my cubes strategy. So I know that I'm gonna need to circle the numbers, but I have to understand what those numbers mean. It's not just enough to circle those numbers. So the first thing I see is that she has four packs. So I like to circle the four packs. And then it says there are five markers in each pack. So there are five markers. She gives away some markers and ends up with eight for herself. How many markers did she give away? So I'm going to underline that because that's my question. How many markers did she give away? And um, I've already done the circle and the underline. I'm going to look at boxing in. So I can see that there's each pack has five markers. She gives some away. So that means she's going to have to subtract. And then this word right here tells me a lot. She ends up with eight. So when I evaluate that, I'm going to take this eight. It tells me that's what she ends up with. And I'm going to put it in my end box. The other thing is I need to know what she started with. And she did, we're not going to say she started with four packs. We're not going to say she started with four, five markers because she bought four packs of five. So that would be like me um, drawing my four packs. And then there were five in each pack. So I have to figure out what did she start with? That's why on the diagram, she wrote four times five first, because that's what she started with. Four times five is 20. So I know she started with 20 markers, but then the next step says she gives them some away. We don't know how many she's giving away. That's what the M stands for. So we're gonna put in that M and then we know what she ends with. She ends up with eight. So I have to figure out what do I need to do on the left side to make it equal to the right side or eight. One way that I could do that is to subtract the eight from 20. So I would do 20 minus eight. And that would actually leave me with 12. So she gave away 12 markers. Judy gave away 12 markers. That's what my question is. If I want to check this, I can put in my numbers into my number sentence. 20 minus 12. That equals 8. So it makes sense. All right, let's look at some more and practice some more. So, I just went through all of those steps. Let's look at this one. Beckett bought three boxes of toy cars. Each box contains 10 cars. Beckett's friend gave him more cars, so now he has 35. How many toy cars did his friend give him? So, as I'm looking at this, I know that I need to go through cubes. Um, so I'm going to set this up. And the first step is find, circling the numbers and looking at what we know from the story. So I know that there are four baskets and each basket has two red apples and two green apples. How many apples are there in all? So I know that this is the question and it's asking us how many there are in all. That's gonna be my end. And I need to figure out 
what I need, what how I'm going to solve this. So it says that there are the keywords I see are each basket has two red apples and three green apples. So I really think that I'm going to need to know how many apples are in each basket. So I think that I want to do in the change, I want to do this first. So I'm going to put parentheses around it. Two plus three. So that's my first part. Then what I want to see is that there are four baskets and each basket has this many. So I'm going to start with the four baskets and then I'm going to multiply it by this quantity because four baskets and there's each that tells me I'm multiplying. And then I'm going to multiply the quantity two plus three. <clears throat> so we've evaluated it. We've got our problem set up. Let's go ahead and go through the steps. So we solve the, the parentheses first. Two plus three is five. And that, I'm done with that. And then I can do four times five. So my second step is going to be to find four times five. And that equals 20. So when I'm thinking about this, the two steps that I had to do, first, I had to know how many apples were in each basket. In order to know how many apples are in each basket, I had to add two plus three. The second step is then finding out how many are, are in four baskets. So that's why I had to do four times five. Let's look at another one. I actually skipped um, Beckett one, so we're going to go back to it. <clears throat> so let's try it again. Beckett bought three boxes of cars. Each box contains 10 cars. Beckett's friend gave him more cars. Now he has 35. How many toy cars did his friend give him? So what do we know from the story? He has four boxes, so I'm gonna circle it. There are 10 cars in each box. His friend gave him more and now he has 35 cars. So I'm un done circling, I need to underline the question. How many toy cars did his friend give him? So I'm trying to figure out how many his friend gave him. Now I'm going to box in the keywords and I can see the word each box. So it makes me think multiplication. His friend gave him more. So that makes me think add. And then it tells me now he has 35. So one thing that I know is that he has 35 in the end. And I need to know what he started with. Um, I'm looking at he bought these three boxes and there were 10 in each. So how do I figure out what number sentence do I need to use to figure out how many he has if there are three boxes with 10 in each. So the first step that I want to do is figure out how many he started with. <clears throat> I'm going to put in the number sentence 10 times 3. I need to know 10 times 3. Then I don't know. I need to find out how many his friend gave him. So remember, we said this was gave means plus. So I'm going to have to find out what he added, and we don't know that, so I'm going to use C for cars. So my equation becomes 10 times 3 plus C equals 35. Now, I don't need to necessarily put parentheses around this because based on order of operations, I know that I'm going to multiply before I add. So I have this problem that I need to solve. 10 times 
3 plus C equals 35. So I have to look at solving this part first. 10 times 3 is 30. And then I have to add something to it to get 35. So what can I add to 30 to get 35? C is going to equal 5. So we're going to add 5. His friend gave him 5, and then I would need my unit cars. All right, let's look at another one. <clears throat> we already did the basket. Let's look at this one with Linda. Linda has $45 in her bank account. Um, each week for four weeks, she deposits $10. She earned from doing chores. How much money does she have now? So what do we know from the story? She has... $45. This part right here should not be written. I double pasted it and didn't get all of it erased, so don't worry about that. Each week for four weeks, so I know that we're going to look at four weeks, she deposited. Deposit means to add, and then she de deposits $10 from she earned from doing chores. How much money does she have now? So we're trying to figure out how much money she has now. And this is asking us that word now, I'm going to box in, is telling us at the end. So I'm going to say in the end is what I need to find out. I'm going to go with M for money. Okay. Now I want to look at what I know and find my math words. So I circle the numbers, I underline the question, now I'm looking for the math words. I see each week for four weeks she deposits, and I already told you that deposit means add. Um, those are my key words that I'm going to use. Evaluating this, Linda had $45 in her bank account. Well, that's what she started with. We know what she had in the beginning, 45 and then she deposits, so my change is going to be plus something. But it doesn't just say plus $10. It says $10 for four weeks. So if I have four weeks and they each have $10 in them, how much money will she have to deposit? So I can look at my um, problem and I can see... 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 is 40, but I want to put that into my number sentence. So really what I did was um, 4 times 10. And I don't necessarily need to put this in parentheses because I still do multiplication first, but we could put parentheses around this so that I know that I solve 4 times 10 first. So here's how I'm going to solve this. This is the equation that I need to solve. Okay, so 4 times 10 is 40. Whoops. Then I need to add 45 because that's what I had in the beginning, plus the 40 that she earned over her four weeks. And that gives me the answer, $85. So now she has $85. All right, you are going to turn in your book to page 215. And on 215, you've got the different diagrams that we could use to solve it. And it says to write a number model, use a letter for the unknown, and you may draw a diagram. So um, when I'm grading these, here's what I'm looking for. I'm going to be looking for 
um, the letter that you're going to represent. I'm going to be looking for the number model with the letter. I'm going to be looking for the answer and then the number model with the answer. So there are four points for each of these problems. I still want to use cubes. So I'm going to write cubes out just so that I remember. Please write cubes on your book. You should be doing this with me. Write cubes on your book. I'm going to circle what I know. She has two packs and there are five crackers in each pack. He ate some crackers. Now Ronald has seven crackers. How many crackers did he eat? Did he eat? So I underlined or circled the number. Now I need to find my question. How many did he eat? Box in my keywords. I know PAX tells me one thing, but then this each. And I know that because he ate something, that is subtracting. Usually this is going to be multiply or divide. And I can see that now he has something. So one thing, let's start with what the letter represents. Um, I'm going to say C for crackers, since that's what we're looking at. C for crackers. Since I'm not at school because of the snow day, it is so hard to write with the mouse. I know you guys know that. Um, I need the number model with the letter. Um, I'm going to use the diagram, and I'm going to use the um, start, change, end one, so this one right here, because I know that he has two crackers, and they have five each. So if they has two crackers or two packages, and there's five in each, I need to know that total. And I know that five plus five is easy, but I want to write the whole number sentence out. So I have to solve two times five. And then it says that he ate them. So my change is going to be minus something, but that's what I'm trying to find out. So I'm going to say minus C. And then my end, now he has seven crackers. So my number model is going to be two times five minus C equals seven. So the way that I answer it, two times five is 10 minus C equals seven. So 10 minus what equals seven? Well, 10 minus three equals seven. Now it says to write the number model with the answer. All that means is take the number model up here and instead of using C, we're gonna put in three. So we should have two times five minus three equals seven. Two times five minus three equals seven. Because of order of operations, I do multiply first. Two times five is 10. 10 minus 3 is 7, so that works. All right, looking at the bottom of this page, number 2. says, Layla bought three pag bags of fruit. Each bag has four oranges and six apples. How many bags of fruit did she buy all together? So I'm going to have cubes. Write out cubes. That B got a little bit crazy. And I'm going to go through and circle my letters, my numbers, actually. She has three bags. Each bag has four oranges, six apples. How many fruit did she buy in all is my question. <clears throat> so I've got this piece in the U. Um, each bag has this. Doesn't say that she gave anything away, so I've boxed in my words. Ooh, all together is going to tell me it might be add or multiply. I'm trying to find how many pieces of fruit. So let's go with F equals fruit. All right, let's look at what she has. 
Um, we know that she has three bags, but we don't really know how many fruit are in there, except that it's four oranges and six apples. So I think one of the first things that I'm going to need to do in my start change is I need to know how many fruits are in the bag. So in parentheses, I'm going to do four plus six. And then we're going to multiply that by three because she has those three bags. And that's going to give us F. So my number sentence is going to be in parentheses four plus six. Now, the reason that I have to put this in parentheses is because the second part of my problem is multiply, and I need to know how many pieces are in each bag first. So that's why I put parentheses around four plus six. Okay, to solve it, four plus six equals 10, and then we multiply it by three to get the number of fruit. And we know that equals 30. So there are 30 pieces of fruit. Now I'm gonna write this number model, but instead of having F, we're gonna put in 30. So I have to have my parentheses because we have to do this first. Four plus six times three equals 30. Okay, so solving these problems, really the best way is going to be to use cubes. We're really going to have to stop and think, um, what is the problem saying? You are not going to just be able to look at it and just put the numbers in into a diagram wherever you want. You are really going to have to be thinking about what the numbers stand for and what it's telling us. So for your assignments, you have your math boxes you have your home link and then you're going to log into your math facts um, and or work on your math facts using extra math you can click on this and remember when it pulls up to extra math you're going to click on um, or log in using clever